After being expelled from his school, Namura joins another one, where every girl hates him and carries a sword. Unknown to them is that he's the strongest swordsman, who decides to not use a sword and rule over the school by making every girl fall for him. Namura is an orphan who grew up being abused and tortured during swordman combat training by his grandfather. This treatment put so many scars all over his body that he ran away from home and stopped using swords. Since then, he decided to only use hand-to-hand -hand combat and created an ability called Magic Bullet, where he can concentrate all his strength to create a devastating attack. In middle school, he meets a student named Amu. To his surprise, Amu looks feminine and jokes about how he could confuse him for a girl and kiss him. He quickly gets behind Amu and tries to give him a smooch, but gets elbowed back. Despite the weird approach, Amu is impressed and becomes his friend. A student thanks Namura for saving him from some bullies, and offers to tour him around the school. Amu arrives and offers the same thing. However, Namura declines Amu's offer and says he already has plans. He proceeds to walk in the hallway with the student, but Amu gets angry and assaults the student. Amu says that Namura should only hang out with someone worthy. Namura is displeased by Amu's act and decides to fight him. Namura is asked to be Amu's subordinate but he replies trying to punch him. Without noticing, Amu grips his stomach and slices his chest with his hands as if they were a blade. Namura had to recover at the hospital due to his injuries, and once he returned, he got expelled. He manages to enroll in a new school and is surprised to see that all the girls carry weapons. He turns around and is even more taken aback to see men dressing and behaving like girls. He chats up Masuko, a fellow male student who cautions him about being careless and tells him to act like a girl if he wants to be spared. But our boy is unwilling to wear makeup and dresses and insists on doing only what he pleases. He enters his room, and he's greeted by Rin, one of the supreme five swords who rule the academy. They protect the school from guys and discipline those who need it. This used to be an all-female school, but it started to accept boys as students, who revealed to be thirsty and terrorized all girls. As a result, the girls started to use weapons and made them live in a living hell. And apparently, the girls have already reported that Namura is a thirsty troublemaker. Namura states his disagreement with their rules, and she decides to correct his behavior. She starts chasing him around with her sword, and manages to slice his tie when they land on the school grounds. He dodges every attack, and she commends him for having quick reflexes. She makes another move to attack. He watches her feet and tries to trip her, but she changes her position, and in a split second, she slashes a part of his face. Namura is amazed by her strength and puts on his blade-resistant gloves. She tries to attack him, but he quickly deflects it. Rin traps Namura between herself and the tree, preventing him from escaping. Luckily, he spots an opportunity and slips in behind her. She swings for the knockout blow, but he dodges it with a magic bullet that sends her flying. Namura brags about his secret technique, but for some reason, Rin already knows about it, which is supposedly only known by a few people. He wants to know how she heard about it, but Nano, Rin's subordinate, arrives and knocks him out. He later learns from Masuko that he needs a slip stamp by the Supreme Five Swords to leave the campus. Namura visits Rin the next day after knowing she has a fever. He asks her to sign the permit to go outside. She stamps it and passes out due to her fever. He tries to catch her but ends up getting some plot development. Nano walks in and misinterprets the scene and starts chasing him around. While running, he encounters Chauka, a subordinate to the Supreme Five Swords. She carries a whip as a weapon, and with Nano, they fight Namura to correct his behavior. Namura puts on his gloves and says he will not pay them much attention. Nano targets his wrist and he sees her in a similar stance as Rin. Chauka tells him that they're doing level 2 correction, where two or more people carry out a punishment. The only student that has made it through so far is the Empress, a transfer that also happens to be new this year. The girls simultaneously attempt to hit him, but he quickly grabs Nano's wrist, and the weapon entangles her arm. He fires the magic bullet at Nano, and she gets blown away together with Chauka. Rin picks Namura early in the morning and says she will supervise him and be with him all around. As a protocol, she checks his bag before going to school. Not long after, Mary, one of the Supreme Five Swords and the older sister of Chauka, appears before them. She opposes Rin's supervision and says Namura should be corrected immediately. She insists that she will do it, which Rin disapproves of. As the two girls fight, Namura gets chased by Chauka. He quickly gets her whip, but she collapses in the middle of their fight. He gets confused about why, until he realizes that his pants have gone down. He quickly fixes it, and when he looks up, he's surprised to see a girl who looks exactly like Amu. He asks if she's Amu and asks how he became a woman. She replies that he's mistaken her for someone else, as she has always been a girl. 
Mimura doesn't buy it and prepares to attack her instead. However, he stops when he hears Mary yelling his name. He realizes his pants went down again, and he loses the mysterious girl. Mary is so skilled with her sword that she's able to slice through Namura's protective gloves with ease. She then slits his uniform and slices at his vitals, inflicting pain on his back. He sidesteps her blows, but she still manages to inflict some pain on his back, rendering him immobile for a split second. He gets back on his feet again and attempts to get near her, but it is more difficult because of her sword. She laughs as she already knows his tactics and prevents him from getting near her. Seeing that he has nothing left to give, Namura rushes forward to end the fight. She thrusts her blade into his stomach, but he prepared for this attack by placing a book there. She keeps her distance as he leaps into the air and strikes her with the book. Mary thinks he will take advantage of her femininity. However, he strongly refuses her suggestion. When she realizes that he's not like what the rumors suggest, she grants him her stamp for the permission slip. Nimura finds Masuko beaten up and tied in the middle of their campus. He wants to help him, but Rin and Mary stop him as they have a bad feeling about it. Waravi, one of the Supreme Five Swords, challenges them for disturbing the campus. He asks why Masuko is being punished, and she says he brought a restricted item to the premises. If he's able to surpass a sumo challenge, she will let go of Masuko and give Nimura her stamp. Hearing it makes him motivated, and he agrees. Warabi's subordinates announce that they'll be their opponents. But his opponent is not a girl or a guy. It's a huge bear named Kyobo. Mimura tackles Kyobo the moment that the round begins. He fires the magic bullet, but it doesn't deal damage due to the bear's size. He does the same thing again from behind but figures that it isn't enough. As the bear attacks him, he sneaks from its back and tries to suplex it. While everyone around him worries that he can't do it, he reminisces about when he was a little thin kid who was against massive adults. Rin and Mary shout to let Kyobo go, but he refuses. He tells Warabi that he doesn't care how mighty she is. He will never tolerate her hurting innocent people like Masuko. He puts Kyobo on the ground and reveals that he untied the bear's mawashi, which makes him the winner according to the sumo rules. Warabi gets enraged and tells them to meet her on the roof. Namura meets Satori, an odd member of the Supreme Five Swords. She states that she will help him find a way to get him to the roof and give him her stamp. After getting to the roof, Warabi insults Rin and Mary for growing fond of him instead of disciplining him. Mary goes downstairs to deal with Warabi's girls, while Rin goes against Warabi, and Namura fights the bear. He tries to use common internet sense to fight the bear, but gets a massive jab in the face. Warabi then reveals the bear has been training in boxing. Kyobo attempts to punch him in the face again, but he quickly avoids it and fires the magic bullet. He takes a few steps backward until he realizes that he's cornered. The girls are having a difficult time against the opponents, but Namura motivates them by thanking them for helping him settle in the new school. He provokes the bear that tries to tries to attack him again but stops midway. When he sees that it has its head down, he takes that opportunity to release a powerful punch and takes it down. On the other hand, Rin is able to defeat Warabi and gets Namura his fourth stamp. The class is cancelled because the Empress is going on a rampage against the five Supreme Swords. Rin is shocked by the news and mentions a name called Amu. It immediately gets Namura's attention, especially when her description matches Amu. He's getting confused about the two. While the name Empress sounds like she's a woman, he knows Amu is a guy. While walking around, Namura sees Inabat, the only middle school student in the Supreme Five Swords. Masuko warns him that he shouldn't come near her. However, he doesn't listen and proceeds to come forward to get her stamp for the slip. He's only a few inches away from her, and he stops when she swiftly swings her blade without him noticing. However, Inabat assures him that she didn't cut him, and reveals Yukino, the school principal, entrusted her to take care of him. While talking, she mercilessly slices the butterfly in half so he mentions how she could kill such a being, and it's more reasonable if it's a moth. She replies that she can't tell the difference between the two, and he realizes she's blind. Amura notices some commotion on the rooftop. He asks her about it, and she says it's the Empress. She says that the Empress is aloof and only talks about Namura. Without a second thought, he rushes to the scene. He arrives at the rooftop and finds all his friends injured. As he assists Warabi, Yukino comes out of nowhere without him noticing. She says she'll handle her and instructs him to help Rin and the group, who are currently against the Empress. Inaba is already injured but still tries to attack Amu. However, Namura pushes her aside and attacks Amu. He punches her, but she pierces through his stomach. She's famous for her move called Auto Counter. Everyone thinks he's done for, but he gets up and reveals he was prepared with a book covering his abdomen. Amu says they were once friends, but he says that things didn't go well. 
he expresses how much he hates her for hurting his friends in the academy. With a grim look, Amu declares that he should die, not because she hates him, but because she fell in love with him and can't bear to see him around other people. Namura thinks he can't use the magic bullet since it will only work once against her. If he messes up, he will be at a disadvantage and won't be able to protect the girls against her. But Rin and Mary encourage him. He smiles and willfully faces Amu. He puts himself in a swordsman's stance, aiming to attack her at a short distance. But she effortlessly dodges it. She gets distracted for a split second, and he uses that opportunity to sneak behind her and attack. But she sees through him. He uses his blazer to fool her when she tries to stab him. He steps backward, but she quickly throws the blazer on his head and tries to kick him. Fortunately, Inaba instructs him to jump toward her. Inaba lectures him for his reckless actions. Instead, she advises him to use Amu's weakness to defeat her, including baiting himself. Namira thought he had nothing to lose if he had fought weaponless. But since he got into the academy, he realizes that he needs to protect lives, including the Supreme Five Swords. Amu looks at him with pain in her eyes. It starts to rain, and the weather shift parallels Amu's emotions. As her sorrow gives way to rage, she expresses her intent to take Namira's life. Namira purposely exposes his vital points, and she slashes his torso. He takes that chance to fire the magic bullet against her. She drops to the ground, giving a similar sight to when they fought before. Despite the huge blow, Amu manages to get up. She says she isn't going down with one hit, so Namira challenges her to fight him with all her might. They keep hitting each other with punches like there's no end. Amu keeps on wanting more. He's about to lose, but when he hears Rin screaming his name, he returns to his senses and fires a magic bullet. However, she also auto-counters him. He vomits blood and figures that Amu is just playing according to his style. She places his hand on her chest and challenges him to use his skill. He asks if they can stop the madness, but she doesn't allow it. She tells him that she loves him so hard that she wants to kill him. She again asks him to be hers, but he smiles and refuses her request and hits her with his move. After the fight, Inaba offers Namura to be his teacher due to his sloppy fighting ability. He's confused about why he should accept the offer, but she will give him her stamp if he agrees. Yukino arrives and orders everyone to leave except Namura, because he just got himself expelled. After hearing the news, he bids goodbye to his friends. While walking, he sees Inaba who asks again about her offer. He refuses to be her student, and she mentions that Amu is already at the airport. He rushes to the airport, but Inaba says that although he's expelled, he can't leave the grounds unless he has the fifth stamp. To run after Amu, he has no choice but to accept her offer. Namura makes it in time and meets Amu. As the two cherish their final moment together, Amu tells him to be himself and do what he wants. As a farewell, she says he belongs to her and will always be in her heart. He returns and meets Rin outside their academy. Mary appears and explains that he's not expelled and that Yukino is just joking. However, the two will remain beside him to monitor. Rin asks if he will choose to stay at the academy or leave. He smiles, refuses to make a choice, and suggests having fun instead. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.